Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about a basic approach to the MRV brain. Um, MRV or MR venogram is the gold standard to detect venous sinus thrombosis. And ideally, like when we're talking about the gold standard type of study, we're talking about both a with and without contrast. And the with contrast will be ideally um, multi, uh, multi-phase or multiple time point post-contrast imaging. Uh, conventional brain MRI um, can miss some venous sinus thrombosis. Um, in particular, particularly problematic is subacute or chronic infarct that can enhance. Um, and so it can be difficult to distinguish contrast within a patent uh, venous sinus from you know, clot that has some enhancement. Um, there's also always the uh, kind of consideration of inherent T1 signal in blood product, which is important to differentiate. Generally, conventional brain MRI, uh, particularly post-contrast MP-RAGE or like a 3D, which is like a G- 3D GRE sort of sequence, um, combined with a pre-contrast, you know, comparing pre and post-contrast, can be helpful to detect acute and subacute thrombi. Having that dynamic post-contrast imaging, however, is going to be really important to detect, you know, thrombi of different ages. It's important to note as a big picture that MR venogram images, especially if you have dynamic post-contrast sequences, can show you arterial anatomy if you image early enough. Uh, we're also responsible for looking at abnormalities there if they appear in the images. And as with all you know, angiographic, venographic studies, you're going to see a whole bunch of nonvascular anatomy. And it is you know, uh, good practice to make sure that we are every time looking in a systematic way through that anatomy as well to detect other, whether incidental or even potentially explanatory pathology. Okay. So the overall approach to an MRV of the brain um, is like with any study to understand what's going on with the patient and you know prior studies that have imaged the brain whether non-contrast CT head, CTA, other MRI studies. A lot of patients in whom there is concern for you know an acute venous sinus thrombosis will have previously received a CTA head and neck looking for arterial uh, abnormality and it's it can be particularly useful to look at that prior study as depending on institutional protocol and patient factors on that exam, you can have some filling of the venous sinuses and you can be keyed into potential underlying abnormality. Okay. Um, once you have an understanding of what's going on with the patients, looking at all those priors, um, we're going to take a look at the study as a whole, see what sort of technique was used, um, what is available in terms of our sequences, and then it's always good practice. We'll go through localizers um, and assess DWI ADC as usual, and then go through any sort of time of flight phase contrast, pre you know, non contrast type MRV uh, images, and then we'll look at the d- dynamic post contrast images. Frequently, I like to do this in an NPR viewer. Um, and then sometimes there's kind of uh, like at our institution, we use um, these projections, like uh, MIT projections, uh, that are helpful to assess the overall extent of the venous sciences. And, and import- again, it's important to remember that uh, for each of these studies, you want to make sure that you're looking at any other you know, uh, anatomy outside the venous sciences, arterial and nonvascular as well. Okay, so let's get started. So I've hung uh, our institutional protocol here. Um, we've got localizers, we've got DWI, I've got a um, 3D uh, MP rage post contrast, I've got, here's our time of flight, some dynamic post contrast um, projections, and then I've got a whole bunch of different time points that we can pull into an NPR viewer uh, during the course of looking at an approach. So it's important to note as you know, as a big picture, how we approach these is that ideally we're not just relying on a time of flight. Um, time of flight it can, is very artifact prone. Um, if you can only do non contrast, ideal, you know, it's better to do, generally speaking, phase contrast. And if you can only do a time of flight, uh, I, uh, then it can be helpful to do that in multiple planes. You know, it, one scenario where this comes up is in pregnant patients who you don't want to give contrast to, right? So just having that in mind, uh, We'll talk about you know evaluation of a study the way you do have post contrast imaging because we can just look a little bit more in a big picture manner at the time of flight and then use the more sensitive, more 
you know, just useful dynamic post contrast and MP rays to really look for thrombi. All right, so to begin with, um, it's useful to go through the localizer images and make sure we don't have any incidentals, especially out of the field of view of the other sequences, okay? That's uh, kind of like a nice first step for due diligence. And then as with any sort of, um, you know, in similar fashion as we would for a conventional brain MRI is to go through the DWI and ADC images looking for, you know, again, in a systematic way. I like to do outside end, here's our B0, our kind of higher B value uh, images, an outside in approach, looking for any infarct, any abnormal signal, um, and correlating with ADC. It's important to note that in the setting of venous sinus thrombosis, that not all even true DWI signal um, is infarct. You can have, you know, a brain edema that is actually reversible with treatment. Um, so just to you know, get a sense of that. Uh, and no, no, another important uh, consideration is that if there isn't a concurrent brain MRI, you can use the B0 as, uh, to, sh to show you susceptibility. It's not as good as an SWI, but um, if there is some sort of concern for, for uh, acute blood product or really um, any stage of blood product. Um, okay, so after having taken a look at the DWI and ADC correlating between the two, it can be useful then to go to the time of flight images and I'll pull these into a, um, a NPR viewer. And actually, if we do have post contrast images, um, you know, so here we have the, the MP rage and then I'll have a whole bunch of dynamic post contrast images. I, I generally look at these very, you know, quickly and then and, 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 and get to get an overall sense of the underlying anatomy, you know, is there, um, are we seeing overall these superior sagittal sinus? Are we seeing, you know, where the inferior sagittal sinus would be? The, you know, kind of the more deep uh, uh, venous structures, vein of Galen, straight sinus, the confluence of the sinuses, and then around the transverse sinuses, the sigmoid, and exiting jugular vein. So we, we've taken a look at that, right? And then also the superficial cortical struct, you know, uh, cortical veins, the um, you know, uh, if we see them, the vein of Lebay, of Trillar, these sorts of things, um, just getting an overall sense of that anatomy. And then actually, truthfully, relying more so in going through that same anatomy um, on post-contrast images. So we have here the MP rage um, going through that same anatomy um, through the venous, um, uh, the venous anatomy and looking for any filling defects. And remember, as just the single phase MP rage is, is really only going to allow you to to pick up acute and subacute thrombus um, that has differing T1 signal uh, than post contrast uh, at this um, phase of contrast. Okay, so that is important to keep in mind. And what is then particularly useful is then to go through, and you know we have various time points here. And then I can pull these in. So I've got kind of our raw images as well as subtraction images, you know, let's, let's see, this is a different, so this is like an early, um, you know, post contrast. And then we've got, we've got various uh, other phases. And then to go through, and then, I, you know, I like to look at a couple of these and I don't necessarily go through all of them, but to look at, you know, um, especially mid and late um, time points and look and go through the venous anatomy, okay? and Again, we've got, we've got we want, we're, we're going to want to look at the superior sagittal sinus, the inferior, um, the deep uh, venous structures, the, the vein of Galen, um, straight sinus, the confluence, okay, out to each side, down to the sigmoid, okay, exiting ju jugular uh, veins, okay, the smaller structures, all right, if we can see to some extent the cavernous sinus, the you know the ophthalmic veins looking at the superficial venous structures, okay, um, to the best that we can see them, all right? And also recognizing that there are anatomic variations of the confluence of the sinus, you know, and we don't want to be overcalling like an early bifurcation or areas of developmental hypoplasia or asymmetry correlating across priors to understand what is the patient's baseline, okay? Um, it can also be useful to note where there is like an occipital sinus, okay? Um, and especially on pre if there's some sort of um, planned surgery in the posterior fossa, all right? Um, it can be particularly useful if we are concerned about, you know, if we see, we are seeing asymmetry, uh, if to, to, to consider if the sizes of the transverse sinus, the sigmoid and the jugular bulb are similar, okay? 
hypoplasia of one side or the other um, generally affects all these together. If only one of these sides, you know, one of these sites is small, that's more suspicious for thrombus, okay? So, you know, looking, looking first at the time of flight and then correlating with our MP rage using, you know, MP, NPR viewers, and then actually, like, I, I like to pull in multiple different phases throughout um, kind of our post-contrast timeline here, uh, and to see that we, that we have fill-in of all the major deep venous structures, and to the extent we can see them, the uh, superficial venous structures. It's important to recognize, especially if we pull up the kind of our first here post-contrast um, venogram uh, time point, you actually see a whole bunch of the arterial structures. And so kind of large arterial abnormalities you can actually pick up here. Similar, same with the MP rage, right? Uh, and, it, you know, there's, if, if there's aneurysms, if there's other arterial abnormalities, you're going to be able to see them uh, on, on these images. So it's important to just know and to recognize that we do image that, we are responsible to report on anything we see and to take a, you know, a search pattern through that anatomy as you would um, with any sort of brain imaging that we see that. And then uh, you know, uh, you know, this is pretty clear that especially if we do have post-contrast images and we have an MP rage, this is basically all of the anatomy uh, that we would see. Uh, you know, you know, though, again, only just on, on MP rage that we would have on a conventional brain MRI and to take, you know, a search pattern through the entirety of the anatomy. I mean, there's so much here to talk about in terms of extracranial soft tissues, the orbits, scalp, musculature, the calvarium, you know, extra axial um, uh, CSS spaces of, of like the sol side, the ventricles, you know, the, the basal, you know, the basal cisterns, the brain parenchyma, and then we've already, you know, talked about the the what is it, the uh, vasculature, but then a whole bunch of things about the, you know, and then and, and there's a whole bunch of other anatomy, including the skull base, the cellar region, the, you know, the incidental image face, you know, uh, all, all, you know, the upper cervical spine. So these sorts of things, um, we have to make sure that if a patient's presenting with, you know, these nonspecific headache, you know, any number of findings could be potentially explanatory. And there's so many potential uh, incidental findings here as well. Um, so that is important to keep in mind. And then you're going to want to, uh, you know, anything you find here, you want to see, you know, correlating. If, if you, you know, uh, between a lot of times MRV is done concordant with an MRA or MR, uh, MRI brain, conventional MRI brain, you may have recent CT studies. So anything we're finding, we want to make sure that we understand it across these various modalities, across the various imaging sequences, okay? Okay, and the one thing that I glossed over is that at some institutions you'll have 3D rotating, uh, you know, uh, reconstructions as well. Some institutions, like ours, will have, um, we have here actually projections where you've got various time points projected, okay, in sagittal, coronal, and axial. And this can give you a sense of the overall anatomy and just to make sure that everything that you expect to fill in fills in, okay? So these can actually be pretty useful as well. Um, and just to go through the anatomy on these to problem solve any, you know, any concern you've got, uh, you know, and, and to help sum up um, what we're seeing on the various single slices of that time point, okay? So just as a quick recap as to the approach to the MR venogram or MRV brain. Overall, we need to have an understanding of what's going on with the patient. We want to take a look at prior MRI studies, CT, especially CTA. You know, sometimes we have a CTV as well um, and th that we're, we want to clarify any potential abnormality. We're going to prefer, if we can, uh, with and without ima contrast imaging, with dynamic post-contrast. Um, Though if we if we can only do pre-contrast, you know, you, or without contrast, favoring a phase contrast, or if we have to, uh, time of flight in multiple planes to clarify uh, artifact, we'll go through and, and have due diligence looking through the localizers, you know, usual approach to DWI ADC, uh, and then go through the venous anatomy on our pre-contrast, on our MP rage or whatever post-contrast, and then at our um, dynamic post-contrast images as well.